A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, something is brewing that might be the next big thing. There's an old saying, it's better to light a candle than curse the darkness. Well, Christians in Albany in Western Australia aren't letting the opportunity go unattended. They're preparing to have Christmas story time in their local library. Their campaign aims to promote Christ at Christmas by organising story time sessions in libraries and they want their initiative to go nationwide. Two guests joining us, Jenny Yarnell, who's coordinating the the campaign. She's uh, on the line with us from Perth. Uh, Welcome along, Jenny. Hi, Neil. How's it going? Great to be here. Good. And Connie Dector is uh, successfully running a Christmas Storytime event in Albany, WA. Connie, welcome along to you. Thank you very much, Neil. Uh, Jenny, if I come to you first, is this a reaction to perhaps the rise of what some parents uh, say is a very disturbing trend called Drag Queen Storytime? It is and it isn't. Um, We really want to get the message out there about some good stories and things that are uh, available uh, for students, uh, for young people to be listening to. Um, We would like to put out there the, the story of Christmas that a lot of people, young people in particular, don't know about the traditional story. And it gives people the the opportunity to be exposed to the truths of the gospel and to Jesus being the reason for the season. And uh, interestingly, it doesn't really need to be reactionary at all, does it? Uh, To read stories for kids, uh, a really wonderful opportunity to be able to talk about Christmas. Absolutely. And, um, you know, there's, there are uh, lots of celebrations and things around Christmas time. And with the growing trend of the Christmas decorations and the, and the shops not putting up anything about the traditional Christmas story, um, uh, just getting it out there uh, enriches Christmas time and helps Peter understand where our, some of our traditions and things came from. And Jenny, of course, uh, other dimensions too. I mean, there's been rising concerns in different communities around Australia over what books are stocked on library shelves uh, that children have access to. I guess uh, this is a, a positive thing that you can do, actually, to introduce kids to Christmas books that actually tell the Christmas story. Yes, absolutely. And um, we've got some marvellous ones which have been uh, suggested. Um, which uh, give um, young people an opportunity to interact with the um, with the Christmas story. So we've actually got um, some that we would like to share. Uh, the Christmas Promise by Alison Mitchell, a very noisy Christmas promise by Tim Thornborough, and the Christmas Story by John uh, J. John. Uh, these are really um, excellent, uh, engaging stories and colourful books, which I think the the young people will really enjoy. And I think we'll mention those books again towards the end of our conversation too. Let me come to you, Connie. You have successfully run a Christmas Storytime event in Albany there in WA. Uh, Give us a a blow-by-blow description. What does it look like when you're doing a Christmas Storytime? Okay, it's actually quite a straightforward thing. Um, so we had, we of course had to choose par- uh, people to be readers of the books. So we selected two of the books and we had one pastor who read um, and then one, so we had a, f- a male and a female um, reading the two books and they one of them was quite, Bible based, I suppose, quite um, close to the scripture itself. The other one was very interactive and the children loved both the books. They really enjoyed them. Then we had activities for the children to take part in. Our focus was on children um, two to five. And because we did it on the first Monday of the school holidays, we also had siblings along. So we had 
activities for the older children included in what we had planned. Um, we had four activities for the young children and we decided that that was actually a little bit much, so three would be sufficient. Um, but they enjoyed everything that we prepared for them and then as they left, they each received um, a gift bag with a number of different things which they could then either go and do a craft activity at home or give something away to someone else. Um, so that was basically how we'd set it up. Connie, what sort of reception did you get when you approached the library to do something uh, like this for kids? Yes. So we initially um, had conversations with people who had already approached the library in response maybe to what was happening in story time. Um, and so we discussed with them how they went about it and I suppose that helped us in terms of our approach to the library. Um, so the ACL, if I may mention them, sure. they actually ran a campaign last year to have story time in different libraries across the nation. And at that time, we were already doing our preparations for a potential story time. So what they had prepared actually helped us significantly because um, I knew about it as an ACL um, volunteer myself. That's how I came to know about it. Um, and that then helped direct our approach. So we then went to um, the website, the library website, and there was an opportunity there to book rooms for um, a story time. Previously, someone, someone had approached the library about actually taking one of the library story times and they were knocked back with that, both um, via email and also um, in person. So we, we realised that we didn't really want to approach the library in that way. We, we thought we would take the approach of following their, um, the opportunities that are there in the library itself. Well, I'm um, sure that the approach that you have to the librarian who makes those sorts of decisions is mm -hmm. going to be important. And I, I know mm -hmm. there's a training coming up, and I'm going to talk in yeah. just a few moments to Jenny, but stay with uh, this concept of a story time at the library. Uh, there's been a yeah. popular concept of pastor's story time, but you've yes. taken all that even steps further with uh, with crafts and activities as well. Yeah, yeah. And we we felt it was necessary to or important and and also lots of fun to engage the children in a in activities that actually relate to what they have heard, um, which they can then take home and that keep reminding them of the stories and also help them to keep thinking about and talking about them with their parents and also maybe with friends and others. Jenny, coming back to you, do you think yes. or do you see this perhaps even being the start of a whole new movement? I know you want this to spread all around the country. Mm -hmm. Is this something that's the beginning of something really big? Well, uh, we certainly do want it uh, to go in that area. Um, I do say as well the um, Australian Christian Lobby has been very um, helpful in promoting this in uh, in Australia and they've also provided excellent uh, resources and steps to actually go about doing things. With the um, Australian Association of Religious Education, they're a national body and they are involved in training uh, people and giving uh, teachers in particular professional development um, in the Christian schools, etc. So it is going out nationwide and we're hoping that uh, people will come on board with this. It is an exciting time. It is, I mean, uh, people do in their churches do um, Sunday school and they tell stories and they have activities. So in some respects, it's not um, that much different from actually doing just um, a Sunday school uh, time and, and reading, but it's in the public space.
which uh, wonderful is initiative interesting. because as you say there are people who are already so well skilled in being able oh, to communicate absolutely. to children so uh, what's happening in your local Sunday school children's church uh, simply gets to be in an outside the church place in your local library you mentioned a training session that's coming up I know you've got one planned for the 12th of October Saturday the 12th of October uh, two till four, just two hours. Uh, you're going to be in Dianella in Western Australia, but I guess mm-hmm. people from all over Australia who might be listening to our conversation now can join in a Zoom session to be a part of that. And I guess you go through some practical things. What sort of practical yes. things do we need to know? So um, if they want to um, uh, join for that professional development, the two hours for teachers will be accredited as part of their uh, requirements as far as the education department is concerned with the teaching standards, uh, because myself, I am a teacher, and so that I can present um, this uh, professional development. Um, now, at the training, they will uh, get ideas on what to, what to do on the day, um, some practical ideas of approaching uh, the different libraries. There will be you know, all those, uh, the opportunity to be with other people and teams and, um, you know, connect with areas. So it's really worthwhile being there face to face. If they can't do that because some people are four or five hours outside of Perth, um, again, they'll, uh, with the Zoom, they can um, uh, connect in with the chat. We will also have uh, Connie on in Zoom. And so she will be able to tell them in very practical ways what she's done um, and what to look out for, the positives and the negatives, et cetera, which you shared today. Well, Um, it's it's going to be a significant training, and I think it'll be music to the ears of a lot of people listening who are inspired by what you're doing in Western Australia. And the fact that uh, if you are, in fact, a school teacher, you can count that as some professional development too uh, under the auspices of the Australian Association of Religious Education. So the 12th of October, 2 till 4 p.m., and let me just say, uh, I guess that's 2 till 4 p.m. in Western Australia, do the sums on what your state time will be on the 12th of October between 2 and 4, uh, an email address to be able to register to be a part of that Zoom meeting. And I know you've had some interest coming from around Australia mm-hmm. and also interest from New Zealand. So that's how things are going to be catching on. Uh, for listeners, to be able to be part of that Zoom event, you'll need to be able to connect with Jennifer at jennifer2 at westnet.com.au. Jennifer, yes, and the two, the two is a digit two, not the word two. Okay, Jennifer and the number two at westnet.com.au. And you might have a question. You might want those Zoom details to be a part of that gathering Saturday 12th of October. Uh, to you, Jenny, Yarnell, and to Connie Dector, thank you so much for sharing these things with us today on 2020. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.